somewhere. If they see me, they're going to kill me. Did you know Minnesota has the third highest rate of child sexual exploitation in the nation? Yet a new CARE 11 investigation discovers Minnesota courts are not holding sex traffickers fully accountable. Investigative reporter A.J. Legault is here with more on what's not being done here and the people getting hurt because of it. A.J. Randy, Julie, tonight we are sharing the story of a very brave young lady who, with the full support of her family, is coming forward in hopes that by sharing her painful story, she can help other young women. Now, we do need to warn you that this report contains content that, by any account, is disturbing. They pretty much put her through hell. Gang raped. 22-year-old Jodell survived hell. I get kidnapped, sex trafficked out. But hell has a habit. The flashbacks. Of hanging on. I get flashbacks. Take me somewhere. If they see me, they're gonna kill me. This flashback is six years ago, the moment St. Paul police rescued Jodell. I want my mom. 16 years old and developmentally delayed, Jodell ran away from her Duluth Superior Area home with an 18-year-old friend to meet some boys the friend knew down in the cities. Those boys, Fonity Diggs and Timothy Cross, turned out not to be friends. The girls were taken to this St. Paul motel. Room 229 is where Jodell's hell began. I had a knife put up to my neck when I was being raped. That night... She says Diggs and Cross sold her. They hurt me really bad inside. Turn by turn to their friends. They told me that they owned me and that I had to go to work. Go to work. That meant the next morning ordered to walk this strip of St. Paul Street offering her body for sale. Jodell had other plans. Despite the pimp's threats to shoot her if she did not obey them, she called her mom Judy crying and screaming, uh, hysterical. Mom, they took me and they want me to be a prostitute. Judy told her to immediately call police and St. Paul officers rushed to her rescue. I'm so scared, they're not gonna go back to my family now. Diggs and Cross were eventually captured. Their conviction as sex traffickers, headline news. Jodell returned home. Mm, my life changed. She'd escaped hell, but not the demons. The nightmares, I would relive and what they did to me. To help young sex trafficking victims like Jodell get the trauma support services they need, Minnesota passed a law in 2011 that mandates all traffickers and buyers, so-called pimps and johns, pay a special fine. It's called a prostitution assessment and ranges between $500 to $1,000. It gets split three ways. 40% to police for enforcement and training to combat sexual exploitation. 20% to the prosecutor for education and training to combat sexual exploitation. The remaining 40% to service organizations that provide care for sexually exploited youth. The law is really clear. It says the court may not waive payment of the assessment. The legislature was pretty clear. There shall be a fine and it may not be waived. State Senator Michelle Benson says if a judge does not impose the assessment, they're violating the clear intent of the legislature. But CARE 11 discovered convicted pimps Fonity Diggs and Timothy Cross never had to pay that assessment. Why? Because court records show Judge Leslie Merrick never ordered it. We emailed Judge Merrick asking why the failure to fine. She refused to be interviewed, responding, I do not comment on my cases nor on my decision-making process. So CARE 11 decided to find out if the case of the men who sold Jodell for sex was an isolated oversight or part of a pattern of judges cutting sex traffickers a break at the expense of care for survivors. When we analyzed seven years of statewide court data, we found... From 2011 to 2017, there were 196 traffickers sentenced, but 118 of them, 60%, had no prostitution assessment imposed. Wow. What's even more troubling, K-11 
Carol Levin discovered that criminals who exploit underage girls like Jodell are more likely to get the assessment fine waived than those who trafficked adult women. I cannot fathom how somebody could look at a crime against a child and take it less seriously than they take crimes against adults. Now, I think it's an awareness issue or unawareness issue. Robert Small is a retired judge and the executive director of the Minnesota County Attorneys Association. We're talking about judges and prosecutors. How can ignorance of the law be acceptable? Well, um, that's a fair question, and um, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do a better job. Judge Small says after hearing from Carol Levin, he put this reminder for prosecutors in his association's monthly newsletter to ask judges for the fine. An important reminder, given this is money that is supposed to be used to help trafficking survivors like Jodell rise above their living hell. I haven't forgotten. It's still in my head. We wanted to know if it's just the sex traffickers or are the buyers, the so-called Johns who fuel Minnesota's sex trade, also getting away with not paying this mandatory fine and also just how much money meant to help victims is being lost. Our investigation continues tomorrow night at 10. How is it that they could be unaware? I find that hard to believe that judges could be unaware. That was the question we were asking. Is ignorance of the law an excuse if mm -hmm. you're a judge? and? Not a single member of Minnesota's judicial branch will explain this, will do an interview, will respond to questions. All right, hopefully this makes them more aware mm -hmm. than anything else. You would think so. All right, part two tomorrow night. Thank okay. you, AJ. Thanks, AJ. Well, if you or someone you know is a victim of sex trafficking, there is help. You can call or text the 24-hour LINK hotline at 612-232-5428.